Hello, my name is Rochelle Holm. I am the manager of the Center of Excellence in Water and Sanitation at Mazuzu University in Northern Malawi, Africa. We recently worked to adapt community-led total sanitation for people with disabilities in Malawi, together with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I hope to orient, inspire, and enable you as practitioners to do more to reach people with disabilities. Malawi is a landlocked country in Southeast Africa, and we are one of the world's least developed countries. Our economy is heavily based on rain-fed agriculture, and the majority of our population still lives in rural, hard-to-reach areas. I work at Mazuza University, which is a government university that has been open the past 20 years, where we have the Center of Excellence in Water and Sanitation, focusing to improve the effectiveness of sanitation, hygiene practices, and water supply interventions through research and community programs. Malawi may be somewhat unique, as we have a Disability Act which discusses accessibility and equity, but it is silent on the link between disability, water, and sanitation. This is especially important as the prevalence of disability was 4% of the population in the last census. Our work to modify community-led total sanitation for people with disabilities took place in the northern Malawi district of Rumpi. In brief, over a period of a few years, we conducted a baseline survey of people with disabilities. Together with WEDIC, we held a special three-day WASH training for WASH staff to bring awareness to issues that people with disability face in WASH at home. We called this training CLTS+. Plus. We compared 15 villages who had standard CLTS to 15 villages that had CLTS plus, and we conducted a follow-up 18 months post-study. Efforts to mainstream inclusion means we need to raise awareness of capacity of WASH staff, so we carried out a three-day CLTS plus training. It was classroom-based, involved active learning, and also had a local case study. I would like to emphasize that we collaborated at each stage with grassroots disability or organizations on this intervention, and we involved them in the training and orientation, as well as a local case study in the training. Here is one of the concerns by a person with a disability. Lack of water is a real problem for people with disabilities. Let's say within the night I have seizures, but there is limited water. That means I cannot wash my body and clothes properly, so this is a major challenge. It means there are a number of people who you can tell have epilepsy because of how they smell. It's a tough moment for me. Here is the concern of two caretakers. These things are very important because this child needs to be clean and well taken care of all the time. Most of my attention goes into bathing him. Also, it takes a lot of effort from all of us. For every five buckets of water, we could use three or four on bathing her, and we have to carry her to the bathroom. It's a strain now because she is heavy. What worked well and what didn't in CLTS Plus? After 18 months, only some of the training had stuck, mostly the part that involved active learning methods. This included the squatting exercise, where we did a drama with participants to showcase the challenge of squatting to use a pit latrine for example, for someone who is blind and cannot see the squat hole, a pregnant woman, or a person with an amputation. This participant activity was recalled more strongly compared to classroom learning or case study approaches. To make a longer lasting impact on mainstream wash workers, we would encourage the use of the Household Safety and Accessibility Audit, which was a useful assessment tool. 18 months after the study, our household latrine audit results showed that existing conditions for sanitation access are still not optimal for persons with disabilities and that changes may require more time to be implemented. In summary, don't rush. And we didn't see many changes to our CLTS Plus approach or innovations by the WASH workers we were working with and that CLTS Plus did not naturally spread to other WASH workers in other districts. One of the challenges we had in this work was cultural, with only limited local vernacular available to describe people with disabilities. 
working from the beginning with disabled persons organizations or disability specialist organizations for a mutual language of respect needs to be emphasized during project planning. But one of the strengths of this work longer term that I have seen is that this work allowed a foundation of continuing collaboration to be built and engagement with disabled persons organizations and disability specialist organizations has remained even today with Mizuzu University and allowed us to keep the pressure up on WASH actors to do better work. But training in WASH programs cannot just rely on the frontline government staff. There is a need to invest in training a wider group of people to assist in implementation. Keep the program simple. We are all busy. We have 12 steps, but the one step that has really stood out to stick, so to say, was the squatting activity demonstration, which was more of an active learning method by participants rather than classroom or case study learning. For the dissemination of results, we brought together local and national government officials, as well as people with disabilities and disability organizations. We brought people with disabilities to our meetings, providing transport and accommodation for them and their caretaker. It goes with the saying, nothing about us without us. And while this was a sanitation program, it also applies to you when designing water supply to be inclusive. Please consider the issues from the beginning and throughout and purposefully and respectfully involve people with disabilities from the beginning and throughout each stage. Thank you for attending my presentation and please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or follow-up.